calling together the planning board meeting for June 6, 2023. First, I'll read uh, the opening statement. This meeting is being recorded in accordance with the government order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, chapter 38, section 20. Real-time public participation and comment can be addressed to the planning board utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software for remote access. This application will allow users to view the meeting and send a comment or question via the chair. The question and answer function submitted text comments will be read into the record. For those of you joining by phone, press star nine. If you want to ask a question, please raise your hand. A copy of the recording will be on the city's webpage. All votes will be done via roll call to ensure account accuracy. Um, quick review of the agenda. We had three amended approvals added to the agenda. Uh, that's 4153 Arlington Street. Second one is Industrial Boulevard. And then Crescent Street parcel 143 260. We have a uh, preliminary subdivision property 549 Copeland Street and uh, 1315 Main Street Teen Challenge has been continued. So if you're here for that, 1315 Main Street Teen Challenge that is being continued to the next meeting. Um, first, uh, we need a motion to accept the minutes from the last meeting. Motion to accept May minutes. Madam Chair, excuse me, you want to do a quick roll call vote? Yeah, who's in? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, introduction of the board, Larry Hassan. Here. Marty Crobo. Here. James Sweeney. Here. Tony Gonzalez, present. Uh, Yolando might be joining late, but we're going to, we have enough to start the meeting. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. All right, so um, back to acceptance of the minutes for the Prior meeting? Yeah, motion to accept May minutes. Second. Okay. Uh, roll call Larry Hassan? Yes. Marty Provo? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Thank you. Um, Evan, you want to do the street acceptances? Sure. We have uh, three tonight. The first one is Lawson Terrace. It's a little dead end neighborhood off of Copeland by the uh, Country Club. Okay, their motion. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call. Larry Son. Yes. Marty Crowell. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Um, Madam Chair, I just want to, uh, for the record, uh, uh, remind the public that uh, on street acceptances, these are private roads that are coming into the street's jurisdiction. The planning board makes an advisory decision uh, or an advisory recommendation and that the city council will have its own hearing and accept these roads. So just for the record. Thank you, Rob. All right. Second Street is uh, Fields Avenue. It's a smaller road that connects Prospect to Pleasant, uh, close to DW Field, the south side of it. Uh, and again, no issues there. Madam Chairwoman, Madam Chairwoman, could I say something? Sure. That that road is is very near me, and I'm familiar with it. It's an terrible, terrible, terrible. It's barely drivable. So I'm assuming that they want it um, taken over by the city to get it paved. Eventually, okay. yes. Okay. Okay. Motion just to accept field field F. Second. All right. Roll call. Larry Hassan. Yes. Marty Crowell. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Tony Gonzalez is yes. All right, and third is Ida Avenue. Uh, it's a road in a little neighborhood close by to uh, Brockton Hospital. Motion to accept Ida Avenue. Second. Roll call Larry Hassan. Yes. Marty Crowell. I'm having trouble connecting yes. to the internet. James Sweeney. Yes. 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 Tony Gonzalez is yes. All right. Okay, moving right along, um, ET Engineering up first for 4153 Arlington Street. All right, so um, I told them they didn't have to come here. This is really just a Scrivener's error. It's basically a typo on their plan. They wrote one number wrong. 
So they just have to kind of come back here. They've fixed the number. Uh, everything's good. It doesn't really change the plan at all. It's just kind of, they have to go through the official channels. Um, I can pull the plan up if you want to, but no, um, that's it's really, it's correct, correcting a typo. Madam Chair, Madam Chair, if I may uh, ask, what was the number for what, what number on what in? What was the typo? Yeah, what was the oh, number? Oh, okay, on? Uh, it's on their zoning table. Uh, they wrote down a, a 1200 when they should have wrote down 2000. It was for the um, amount of square footage per unit. Uh, gotcha. The calculations were correct. They just wrote the wrong number. Gotcha. Thank you very much. Okay, so the the applicant is not going to no. join us. No. Okay. All right. So do you need a, a motion? Yes. Motion okay. to approve amended approval. Second. All right. Roll call. Larry Hassan. Yes. Marty Provo. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. All right. Next one. Industrial Boulevard. Same brief um, review. Evan, please. This one, the engineer is here. I'm moving him over now. So, but you know, you know what the little amendment is. Yes, and he can. He can. Uh, Gene can just uh, explain right. to you guys if you want a little more information. We don't need a full review. Just a brief um, speak to the change, please. It's pretty quick. Um, yeah, if you recall, I was in front of the board for the. Uh, Industrial Boulevard extension last month, uh, we got an approval for the project to connect the roadways. And uh, after the meeting, uh, the city engineer asked us to do a couple of, or uh, a change to add an overflow for our uh, basin, detention basin on our property to make sure it would not uh, flow onto the road. We've added that to the plan set. So we just want that to be the official plan of record. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There motion. Motion to accept the minute approval on Industrial Boulevard expansion. Second. Okay, roll call, Ay Hassan. Yes. Marty Crowell. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. yes. All right, thank you. Um, last amended thank approval, you. Crescent Street, parcel 143-260. This will be uh, Scott Feria who will speak to this one. Move him over. There he is. Who's moving Scott over? I think we both are. Yeah, I've done it. He hasn't accepted yet, though. He might not have expected everything else to go so fast. Let's see. But the rest of the meeting is his, so. Here he comes. Oh, he's declined to be promoted. Scott, you need to accept it. Um, while we're waiting for Scott, is there some background information you might be able to share? Evan? Uh, Evan? Hold on. Yeah, um, again, this is the same situation as uh, the one we just heard. Uh, we approved it. This was the one with that, um, well, Brockton Hospital, how we just had it come through. And then after the approval, um, it got caught up in stormwater ordinance. City engineer had them make a few changes. Oh, here he is. He's got his hand raised. Uh, so they've made it. <clears throat> Sorry, this is not Brockton Hospital. This is the uh, personal storage unit on Crescent Street behind the plaza across the street from Home Depot. Okay. Hi, Scott, you're on mute. Uh, unmute yourself and give a brief uh, review of the change. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sorry for the delay. Uh, 
Scott Ferry, Holmgren en Engineering, uh, for the self storage facility on Crescent Street. As you guys were just saying, uh, we received planning board approval for the uh, for the site plan when my client went for his building permit. Uh, part of the building process now has the stormwater management permit. There were a couple items that the city engineer wanted us to uh, to address on the plans. So we had a couple of grading changes that we made to the back of the plan. Uh, I'm going to attempt to share my screen, Madam Chair. Yeah. Good not, job. Bravo. Yeah, but that's not the... <laughs> That's not the right one. Click the tab. I'm trying. Is the tab in the middle, the one you're looking for, Scott? Go back up to where you were just clicking. Man, I come over here. Go all the way up to the top. Yeah, there we go. All right. There we go. Do we see that? Yes. Yes, we do. Thank you. All right. So we had some grading changes in the back here, Madam Chair. Uh, just to... Just to specify, I guess, that the grading is supposed to run alongside the building and eventually get out into the uh, into the detention basin that we designed. He just wanted some additional spark raids. We added those spark raids. Uh, there was a question as to the rim elevation down here of a catch basin. So we made those changes and uh, that should satisfy all of his outstanding issues. Uh, so then we need you folks to basically reapprove this with these minor changes, and then he'll be able to issue his stormwater permit, which then allows my client to get a building permit. All right. Thank you. Thank so you. So the, I was going to say, Madam Chair, the building doesn't move. The pond stays the same. Everything's sized. It's just a couple of uh, additional engineering notes on the on the plan. Exactly. Okay. All right. Is there a motion? Motion to approve amended approval on Crescent Street parcel 143-260. Second. Okay, roll call Larry Hassan. Yes. Marty Crowell. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. All right. Now, Scott, you're up again for a preliminary subdivision, 549 Copeland Street, applicant Ramdurin and Surrenderin. Abraham. Yes. Uh, I have. Uh, I have with me. Bill Nazarella should be on. I got him. Is there anyone else with you or just the two of you? Uh, we also have uh, traffic engineer Jeff Dirk as well. Got him. Got him. All right. Are you seeing a subdivision, Madam Chair? Yes. Good job. Not without a whole lot of stress, but thanks. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll, I'll get. To, I'll just give a quick overview. I, I'd really like Attorney Nazarella to to kind of kick it off, but I'll just give a real quick overview while uh, while we're waiting for Attorney Nazarella to come on board. Uh, this is a, a, pre a preliminary subdivision. 28 lots uh, at the White Pines Golf Course, kind of at the end of Copeland Street, just when you cross into West Bridgewater. This, the lower lot line that you're looking at is the town line between Brockton and West Bridgewater. Uh, coming down Copeland Street, heading south onto North Elm Street towards West Bridgewater. Forking to the left onto Copeland Street brings you to the back entrance of the, the Kmart Plaza. <clears throat> so we have 28 residential lots proposed. All of the lots meet zoning requirements for frontage area. Uh, we have some wetlands on the property that we'll have to address. A filing with the Conservation Commission uh, will be happening at some point soon. Uh, and we have had a neighborhood meeting uh, on this project uh, back, you lose track, maybe nine months ago. And a uh, a major concern of, of the neighbors was the uh, the traffic impact, and more uh, specifically, the intersection with Copeland and North Elm Street, mm -hmm. and potential problems that people exiting our subdivision would have with traffic flying up North Elm Street onto Copeland Street. Uh, 
and it, you know, it was reported that there were some accidents on Copeland Street, uh, <coughs> mainly because of that. So that's why we had uh, Mr. Dirks go ahead and do a traffic study. In addition to that, uh, we came up with this subdivision layout where we have two roadways uh, coming off of Copeland Street. The southernmost roadway is going to be an exit only, right turn only. So the traffic will only be able to exit and go down North Elm Street, thereby eliminating the chance of being rear-ended by a speeding car heading into Brockton from West Bridgewater. So a right turn only on that lower uh, subdivision roadway, uh, we feel would, would satisfy any traffic concerns that either the city would have or that the neighborhood would have. Uh, I think I'm gonna stop, stop blabbing from there, if I may, Madam Chair, and turn it over to Phil just so he can hit whatever notes he has to hit. Thank you. All right. Councilor Nazarello. Another old guy with technology issues. He was just here. He was, I saw him. Oh, there he is. He, he got promoted down. Well, while we're waiting for him to jump over, um, Scott, uh, what sort of uh, physical uh, improvements do you plan on making uh, at Copeland for the new road at the south intersection to, to force cars right only? Yeah, so we'll, th there's a couple of issues, and, and Jeffrey Dirk could talk about it more specifically, but there's a, a couple of existing issues. There's a stone wall that cuts across the front of the property and uh, that kind of separates Copeland Street from the golf course and the golf course parking lot. We'll be eliminating that stone wall. So that will help site distance up and down Copeland Street, exiting both of our, uh, our roadway locations. In addition to that, the, the actual physical uh, limitation on the exit at the southern entrance, we'll, have a, uh, we'll basically have an island that will force all of the traffic to go right. Uh, just similar, like you, you know, similar to what you would have in a, a shopping plaza to, to force you to go right. Uh, so we'll have that down in this location. And again, the, the main reason for the two locations, uh, it's a safety issue. The, the planning board has a, a maximum dead end roadway length of I, it's either five or 600 feet. And obviously that doesn't work on a, on a 30 acre parcel of land. So in order to, to maximize the, the usability of the property, we really have to come up with two roadways. So that, that's the main reason why we have the two as opposed to just a single road like you would see in some other subdivisions. Uh, and again, it, it's typically just a safety issue if there was a, an accident or a tree down in one roadway, uh, emergency vehicles could get in off of the second roadway and circulate through the, uh, through the entire subdivision. So, so that's it. It's a, uh, as I said, it's an existing golf course. There's little ups and downs to the, to the property, as you would imagine with the golf course, that'll, uh, that, that, that should lend itself to a, a pretty nice development uh, to keep the topography as close to what it is now. They're on a heck of a lot of trees within the property. There's certainly trees around the perimeter that we'll be keeping. And the, for the most part, the, the middle of the developable parcel, portion of the land is pretty much wide open. So we'll be using the, the topography as much as we can in the roadway layout, just to minimize the cuts and fills. Thank you. Uh, Attorney Nasrallah, uh, you may unmute your microphone and address the board. Sorry, Madam Chair, I feel like I'm stepping on your toes. Oh, I, I can't see him anyway, so thank you. Phil, you there? Is the um, Scott is the traffic person you mentioned? Is he is, Rob? Do you see him? I am on the. I am on uh, Madam Chair. Uh, for the record, Jeffrey Dirk with the Vanessa and Associates with the transportation consultants uh, for the project. So I, I, I can fill in. I think some of what maybe Phil was going to talk about, or our attorney is going to talk about, as it relates to access and and safety. Um, so I think as as Scott had presented, probably the significant change to the site plan is. Um, it's it's not only the restriction of that southern access to right turn only, 
Um, it, the relocation of it also puts it at the position where the island um, that channelizes traffic between uh, North Elm and Copeland Street, we're just about at the location where that island is. Um, so there may be to Director May's um, comments, there may be some, you know, the channelization that Scott had mentioned, adding some signs to indicate that there's no turn restrictions, and then potentially, you know, maybe some extension of that island. We are cognizant, however, that the fire department needs to get, even though we have it as an egress only, the fire department needs to get in and out of that driveway to the extent that there's an emergency. But from the standpoint of our functionality as it relates to the development, that southern access is, is going to be a right turn exit only. Um, if I could just add, Madam Chair, the project in terms of its context relative to traffic, it's going to produce somewhere between, you know, 30 to 35 peak hour trips. Um, and so as that relates to, to Copeland Street, um, it's not a large increase in traffic. And so our, our analysis was showing minimal impact in terms of delays or added queuing just because of that. You know, one additional vehicle every two minutes is is something that does not rise to a level where, uh, from the standpoint of what we would typically experience of delays and backups at intersection, you won't see any changes as it relates to before and after the project when you get away from uh, the property itself. Um, then lastly, as it relates to safety, as Scott had mentioned, this, you know, one of our critical things is looking at sight lines um, as it relates to the actual speed that people are, are driving on Copeland Street, uh, which is not the 30 mile an hour posted speed. People are, are traveling uh, somewhere closer to 40 and, and you know, above 40 miles an hour. Um, this change of that access to right turn only um, ensures that with the modifications to the wall that Scott had mentioned, uh, we, we it has superior sight lines um, as it relates to right, right turn exit only movements there. So um, a lot of significant benefits as it relates to these changes to the site plan. Uh, so I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have, Madam Chair, members of the board or Director May. So was a traffic study already done? It, it was, yes. It was actually done late last year as a part of the project. Okay. And um, Rob, is another one needed or is this? Uh, I think what, what we need from um, uh, the engineer is to show those improvements that are going to be made uh, mm -hmm. on Copeland. How is the road going to be angled? So it becomes part of the permanent record. Yeah, right. I, we would show that in the definitive, Madam Chair. So the northern exit uh, traffic can go left or right. The southern exit is forcing cars to go right. Exactly. And, um, to my understanding, we need to extend Copeland and North End North Elm to facilitate this. There, there may be a desire, Madam Chair, to, to extend the nose of that median slightly. Maybe it's serrated or, or something along those lines. Because I think the key thing is if the fire department needs to make a left-hand turn to get in there for an emergency, um, we can't do anything that would impede that movement. We don't want them to make a, have to make a hairpin turn to enter. Uh, so we're sensitive to that. But there is an appropriate design uh, to allow for the channelization um, the restriction of the left turn, and then still maintain fire department access if they need to come in that way. Okay. All right. I see oh. Attorney Nazarello with his hand up. Are you, I can't hear you. Bill, you should be unmuted and ready to speak. Madam Chair, if I could. Sure. Um, so the in and out, so the lower uh, right turn only, is that going to facilitate crossing over to continue on Copeland, almost a direct shot? It, it is not. And we do not want that to be, we don't want that to take place at that location. That's where okay. I was suggesting that. Um, if we actually superimpose that the channelized island on this, it just about crosses so that you won't be able to exit from here or enter. Um, but okay. what I was suggesting is that we may want to extend island. that nose a little bit more, and maybe it's serrated just in case if a fire truck comes up Copeland and needs to get into the site, we want to make sure that they could actually do that if for some reason they had to, or same thing with them exiting. Uh, but we don't want motor vehicles to try to do that crossing maneuver. Okay. Yeah, I think that's 
that's why as I could just see the the problems if it didn't do that or something to that effect that makes sense. Um, I got a couple other questions if I can, Madam Chair. Of course. Um, just I know we're probably not in this stage, but we're, are we thinking our utilities are going to be underground with this project? Yes, sir. Okay. S any sidewalks that we're, we're in R one B, right? Uh, it's an R one C zone. R one C. Yep, and I believe your requirements, uh, Mr. Sweeney, require uh, sidewalks on both sides of the road with 34 feet of pavement. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, we haven't got that far yet, to be honest with you. we I think when we get to the definitive part, we'll uh, certainly bring that up as a, as a conversation with you folks, feeling that 34 feet is just way too wide for a roadway. It's 10 feet more than we need. So I, I think we'll we'll have that discussion when we get to the definitive. But for right now, the plan that I have is showing that the, the roadway construction would meet your, uh, your current regulations. Okay. Right. Attorney so Nasrallah. Bill? He had a lot of good stuff to say too. I'll say that. I'm sure. Looks like that. We spent it hours. Looks like he has a, a slow internet connection. <laughs> And, you know, and Madam Chair, board members, the, I mean, the, the reason for filing a preliminary is really just to kind of start the discussion with you folks uh, before we spend a lot of time and money on that definitive plan. It's, uh, you know, there's, I don't know that there's necessarily an action that needs to be taken or really anything that, that uh, any legal issues that you would necessarily need uh, Phil to chime in on. I, so I'm not sure that his absence, although it's unfortunate and I always look forward to listening to him. I don't know that it's that necessary at this point. Madam Chairwoman, if I could ask a couple questions. Yes, please. Mr. Farrier, how are you tonight? I'm good, how are you? Good, thanks. Um, I drove over here to see this and it's a huge piece of property. It is. Um, I also drove and I wish I could remember the names of the, the two streets that have bought the property. Um, but the homes down there are beautiful and their and their property is beautiful. Yeah, Samuel um, Ave is above us. Samuel Ave, there you go. Yeah. And there's another street also, I believe. Yes. And those those properties have beautiful um foliage in the back. So what kind of assurance do they the neighbors have that, that not all that's not gonna be taken down? Well, that's that's what I, I was speaking about before. The uh yep. There again, there aren't that many trees on the golf course, obviously, but the perimeter of the property is wooded, and that that perimeter is going to remain. There's there's a zoning setback that we need for the houses, obviously. Okay. And to be honest with you, I mean, developers, especially around the perimeter, they'd like to leave the trees so they don't have any issues with neighbors, and it costs money to take down the trees. So I, I yeah. think that natural buffer that's there, most of it is on those abutting <clears throat> trees, but. The little bit that's on our property, we're we're intending for that buffer to, to remain. But most of it is on the on the neighborhood. It's they have a lot more vegetation than we do, certainly. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's all I want to know. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from board members? If not, uh, is this open to public? It is. We are going to open this to. Um public discussion and uh, we'll take testimony. If anyone um, of our guests would like to uh, provide testimony, please at the bottom of your screen, if you hover your cursor down there, you'll see a raise your hand icon. If you push that, um, it will show that you want to uh, speak and address uh, the board tonight. Again, if you're on the telephone, uh, you press star nine, that has the same function as the raise your hand. And we have a P. Lynch is the first up. And I'm going to add you, you'll be ex accept your panelist promotion and you'll be allowed to speak. Can we have Scott take the plan down so I can see all the attendees? Thank you. Uh -huh. 
Do we P. have any from the public? Able to un we have uh, P. Lynch. I, unmo I, I unmuted. <laughs> um, you are, thank you. I guess my question in looking at the plan is on the south, what would be the south exit? Why can't that just be, don't have it as an exit? Why can't it just be for fire truck access or right away for fire trucks in the event that the others, because I still see just an issue, the way that intersection's currently configured and the speed at which cars come up that road, I travel it every day. Um, it's, it actually goes to, once you go past the Bridgewater line, slightly after the speed limit goes from the 30 up to 45. So even if you have a right, I mean, I understand the second exit, but why not have it adjust fire truck access or emergency, I shouldn't say just fire trucks, but emergency vehicle, have a gate across it. Don't have the residents use it. Then you don't, because I think he, I, I know what you're saying in terms of configuring the exit so that it forces a car to go right. I still think that myself, that at the speeds travel, and I don't know, I know what you're saying about taking down that wall, um, better access and certain line of sight coming up the road, but there's cars coming the other way too. But, and even though the cars are still going right, I just, that intersection to me where it splits off left if you want to stay on Copeland and right is always a dicey, dicey intersection <laughs> to me. Um, that's all I had to say. But I don't know about the idea of like saying, having that south road strictly for emergency vehicle access, whether it's fire police or, and you know, have a gate across it or something. Um, that's all I had on that. Thank you. What what signage is there now for that inter that split? So the um, Madam Chair, the the Copeland Street, uh, we'll call it northwestbound approach. That's under stop control. The through movement from basically Copeland heading south onto North Elm. That is that's the primary movement. So there's that that's a through movement under free flow control. Essentially, they have the right of way. The Copeland other leg has the stop control on it. If I may, Madam Chair, just to to answer the question as to if we could make that an emergency access. To be honest, it it isn't needed by anybody in our subdivision. There's really one lot that would use that as their primary end exit. Everybody else could certainly use a northern one, as could the one that is closest to it. So everybody could exit out of the north uh, the north entrance exit if, if that was uh, desired by the board. And I, I think that's probably something we can talk to Deputy Chief Williams and you know the other uh, you know other safety personnel in Brockton if they would prefer that. The only issue we've had in other cities and towns where we've done emergency gates, uh, it, it tends that roadway, that section of roadway tends to to not be maintained properly. It might not be snow plowed because now you've got a gate there so they can't plow through. So after we get a blizzard, the fire truck's got to bust through a gate and they've got two feet of snow piled up there. So safety wise in the summer, it works good. They can certainly break through the gate. But I, I think there's uh, there's other issues that perhaps the the safety personnel would have. But we if that was to if that was. Uh, the desire of the the fire department in particular, we would have no problem with making that an emergency exit only, and that would still satisfy, I believe, the planning board's requirement to have the two entrances, the two means of access. So, we would um, leave. Chief it. Williams, do you have anything to add? I'm not a big fan of gates, and for just what Scott said, they don't get maintained. The, the uh, locks don't work when we need them. Um, there's a lot of issues with them, so. Uh, I'm not really a big, big fan of gates, and I'd rather see it left open. All right, thank you. Okay, anyone else from the public? Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to make a comment, and here I have one coming over. I'm promoting uh, Jack H., who will be joining as a panelist. You can uh, unmute yourself and uh, address the board. If you could tell us your name, please. Hi, my name's Jack. My name's Jack Hughes, and uh, I live at 640 North Elm Street in West Bridgewater. And my house abuts the town line. In fact, 
part of my backyard is in the city of Brockton, uh, adjacent to the golf course. Um, let's see if I get the camera to adjust. But my biggest concern was about that second entrance um, that would be located right adjacent to my property. Um, just to share some information that I'm not sure you're aware of, but part of that stone wall that comes south enters into the city of Brockton, I mean, into this town of West Bridgewater and is in my yard. It is not all encompassed by the property owner's land. So if you're trying to improve sight lines, the part of the wall that is in my yard would have to be addressed to approve the sight line. Um, the island that is in the road between Copeland Street and North Elm Street crosses into the town, uh, into the city of Brockton from the town of West Bridgewater. About 90% of that island is in the town of West Bridgewater and it's maintained by the town of West Bridgewater. But there is portion of that, about 10% that goes up into the city of Brockton and it, if from where I think you're putting the road from the, the street access, it would, in my opinion, need to be lengthened to try to keep people from turning um, right and going on Copeland Street uh, into West Bridgewater on Copeland Street. But I wanted to thank the um, design team from the developer for listening to our concerns when I approached him at the neighborhood meeting that we had probably a year ago uh, and, and telling him to put that road there is a big problem. And I said, at a minimum, it would need to be exit only, not entrance. And I wanted to clarify, it is not an entrance. It is a one-way street, is that correct? You can only drive out that street. You can't drive in that street. It's one way, right? Correct. Right. Okay. Southern one is just an exit, right turn only. No. Right. And you can, and, the, and they're proposing it be right turn only, which that makes good sense. Right. And um, I wanted to commend them for bringing that forward because at that meeting we had before, they were not going to do much of anything with that entrance except keep it as an open both ways and left turn, right turn, and whatever you wanted to do. And it was just gonna be trouble. We have many accidents at that at intersection that I can equate to or say. Well, thank you for sharing that because I like to see more of the applicants working with the community, the neighborhood and everybody come into a happy medium. So thank you for sharing that. Um, for the, Madam Chair, I'm sorry, I jumped in and started sharing my screen, but, um, this is the um, intersection that he's talking about. Um, yep. The roadway would be coming in here and we're talking about keeping it as a right turn only. And there might be an opportunity to extend this. Um, uh, a little I, bit I further. Remember. Yes, to keep traffic from going over this way. And, and that is part of the plan, correct? That Spot. will be on the definitive plan if that is what you'd like. I'd like them to show that on the plan itself. Right, right. Okay. So should this should this get past it, that would be a, a condition. Certainly. Okay. Is uh, any other folks from the community public? If any of the attendees wish to speak, please use the raise your hand icon at the bottom of the screen. Oops, I just realized my camera's off, sorry. Um, if you hover, ah, Councillor Nicastro, let me move you up to panelist. <clears throat> and Councillor, you should be coming over shortly. <clears throat> And I just heard Hi. Hello. Good evening. My God, all the attorneys are coming on now. Look out. Uh, <laughs> I prefer to speak last. I prefer to speak after the neighbors speak. And there are, I believe, more on the call. 
All right, if, if there are more, um, just please, uh, no redundant, repetitive statements, comments, questions. So again, if members of the public wish to address uh, the board, please use the raise your hand icon. You can find that icon by hovering your cursor at the bottom of your screen and you'll see a hand up. Uh, oh, there it is. Uh, if anyone would like to do that, if you're on the telephone, please press star nine. And while we're waiting for people to possibly jump in. Uh, Attorney Nazarella seems to be live now. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Well, I'm proud of myself that I'm consistent in continuing to fail and getting through the technology. So at least consistency is, uh, I take it as a credit. Um, mm -hmm. I, I really don't think there's any need for me to reiterate the, the wonderful outline that Scott made in Jeffrey Dirk on the traffic in mm -hmm. the layout and design over these 38 33 acres of land. Uh, the intention is to make a, a well-designed layout with well-designed homes that will fit into the neighborhood, be a credit to the uh, city of Brockton that lacks housing. And this uh, we find will be the most appropriate um, uh, construction for this uh, area and for the community. And we've done it in such a way that we are uh, relieved from any uh, zoning requirements because we meet all of the zoning restrictions and requirements according to the code. So we um, uh, certainly looking forward to taking the input from the neighborhood as we did about a year ago during our first meeting, because whatever uh, tweaks that we think would be appropriate to make a better um, a meta project, we're happy to entertain that. And um, uh, uh, that's I'm, all I have to say. So, sorry, one question I had wrote down, is it 28 or 32 single family homes? Scott said 28 at the beginning of his there, there are 28. I said there's 33 acres. Acres. Uh, on the um, report that we have, I think, Evan, it says 32 single family homes. That needs to be corrected. Well, I will we, do so. Yeah. No, that was, uh, that was modified. When we started out, there were more homes intended. Then we modified it to uh, 28, 28 homes. 28. Okay. i uh, just put that on the record to correct that. Thank you. Did... And um, uh, Madam Chair, <clears throat> pardon me. I just want to say uh, for those who are watching that this is a preliminary subdivision and the applicant will have to come back to the planning board for a second hearing. Um, we will also be taking testimony at that hearing, but what we're trying to do is get the big pieces right so that when they come uh, back a second time, uh, it, it's, it's ready to go. And with that, um, I do not see anyone else with their raise, with their hand raised. So I would, uh, Stages, would like Councilor Nicastro. Thank you. Good evening. Susan Nicastro, 90 Samuel Avenue. I represent Ward 4 on the Brockton City Council. And I know of at least one other neighbor who's caught in traffic um, trying to get down here to participate, John Tuig. Um, and he is a lifelong uh, resident of a couple of streets right off Copeland Street. And he knows this area very, very well. I'm hoping that he gets on before the end. But in any event, it is a preliminary. I understand what that means. Um, and what I wanted to say is, in real life, this is a really difficult area in terms of traffic um, because, and there are so many um, accidents here and I have all the accident reports from the police department in Brockton. I've been told uh, by the West Bridgewater fire chief that he would really like to weigh in on this if this goes to a definitive because he feels it's a real problem the way it's set up. Um, the, the Brockton police chief forwarded me all the traffic information, the accident information. There was a fatality there, I believe within the last 10 years. And the problem is that people come up the hill from Brockton heading into West Bridgewater and they often don't use their turn signals and, and get clipped. People coming down North Elm Street are going 40 miles an hour because that's the, 
the max in West Bridgewater and no one drives to conditions, they drive to the maxes. The, the uh, mandatory speed limit in Brockton is 30 miles an hour. So they've got a head of steam coming down the hill from North Elm Street and people get whacked. And um, I just don't see how that second exit is going to do anybody any good because no one is going to pay attention to, oh, I can only make a sharp turn onto North Elm Street and I can't hover over and go on to Copeland Street. There's uh, a lots of reasons to go to Copeland Street and West Bridgewater, uh, probably more than going up no North Elm Street other than the market basket. I just don't see this access as working in real life. Not only that, the access on the northerly side, it doesn't line up with the existing street on the other side of the street, which services Skyview Drive and the over 55 community that's been there for about 15 years. Um, and it should, I think it's bad planning for it not to line up. And those are seniors that live in there by definition. And I just, I see a lot of problems. I, I see a lot of um, risk in putting these streets where they are. And I don't, I, I just can't support something like this. I just can't. Um, I'm glad the lots are the size that they are. It does avoid a lot of conflict. Um, I'm interested to see what, when the other shoe drops to see what they wanna do in West Bridgewater. But I'm sure that will be after they get their water and sewer permit in Brockton. But, but basically this access I think is a recipe for disaster and for fatalities. And I'd really like to see it go back to the drawing board and redesign it. Notwithstanding Mr. Dirk, who I think a lot of comments tonight, um, because I know in real life that people are gonna die here, but, but and we can't err on the side of, oh, we'll make great taxes on these nice sized lots with four bedroom colonials on them. We have to get it right the first time. And that's what I'd like to urge the planning board to do. It is within your power. Please think about the people who already live on this street and in this neighborhood, as well as there are so many people who fly down this street from West Bridgewater on their way to work in the morning. This is a way to get to Hay to uh, Southward Street and then ultimately onto West Chestnut and now to Route 24. And a lot of people do it. There are backups on Southward Street that, go, that sometimes go back 13 and 15 cars. And a lot of it is cars that pass this way. Um, please take this access issue seriously. I, because I'll be the ones getting the call after you are all long gone off this planning board. And, and um, it's, it's just not, I just don't see it working, I'm sorry. Um, so those are my preliminary comments, thank you. Um, yeah, that, that's my preliminary comments, thank you. Um, thank you so Scott, you mentioned only one, one house is going to use this right turn only, like how, how is that? Could, could you put the diagram or the drawing back up, Scott? I would like to try, Mr. May. Okay. Does everybody see that? There we are. Yes. Okay. What what I was saying, Madam Chair, is this house right here, I believe we have it labeled lot number one. I mean, it would make sense. They're going to want to exit their garage and, and come out this way. Everybody else, it's, you know, it's not a huge inconvenience for them to take a left-hand turn and use the northern entrance. So it, it's, it's really just that one house uh, that's going to be inconvenienced, I guess. They, there's, they still have no choice but to do it. But everybody else is going to be just as easy for them to use the northern exit. It's really, I was just trying to say, it's not like it's a 50 50 split where there's 15 or 20 lots that really need to exit that exit to get out to Copeland Street. So it's, uh, you know, I, I, I think that's, that's the, the best we can do. As far as lining up with the other entrance in, uh, on the, the Skyview development. We don't have the opportunity to line up perfectly with their intersection because they're further up the road on Copeland Street. Our property doesn't extend far enough uh, to could have you, uh, that, that perfect four-way intersection. Could you indicate on your drawing with your cursor where that would be? Skyview is is really just above ours. Uh, you know, probably as as uh, the council said, probably you know maybe by fifty feet. I, I don't think it's a hundred feet, but it's just above our entrance to the north. So we don't have the well, opportunity to line up perfectly with them. And there's no you see opportunity where, for the property. Do you see where the word street is? 
lines up with the E.E. E. in the street. Yeah, right there. That's right. how close it is. And there is, yeah. as you know, Mr. May, there is, uh, you know, a thinking in the planning community that actually four-way intersections aren't, uh, aren't, aren't really looked upon favorably because some people just forget that there's an intersection and blow right through the stop sign. So having what we call an offset intersection is actually now thought of as, as a safer uh, traffic situation than having a perfect 90 degree four way stop. So there's also that uh, to consider from a, from a traffic and a safety point of view. But if you were trying to create a four way uh, intersection, you would have to acquire another piece of property. Exactly. Is that correct? correct? That's is correct. That an is that even an option? Uh, I, I I couldn't speak to that, Mr. May. I, I I don't know anything about that property. But as I said, I think from a from a planning point of view, I don't know that we'd want to have a four way intersection. You know, we've got a relatively it's thirty houses, but a, a twenty eight houses, a, a relatively small subdivision. Uh, the sky view. Uh, development is the same thing. Some people are coming out to Copeland. Some people are heading out the other way. I, I don't know that a, a four-way intersection uh, is, is really the the best the best thing for this particular road. Madam Madam Chair, I'm going to uh, ask Scott to stop sharing his screen, and, and I would like to share mine <coughs> you know. uh, one more time. Um, and Rob, and when you this. have a chance, just speak to what um, the Bridgewater. I heard the neighbors say part of this belongs to Bridgewater. So what's, what is their role and responsibility in this? The city line is somewhere down in here. Right. Uh, most actually, it's a little triangle. bit further south. Yeah, most of that triangle is West Bridgewater. So the gentleman who spoke earlier talked about his backyard. Mm -hmm. In Brockton, there's a line that cuts through in that area and it's hard to see on my map um, so i apologize for that one of the things that we've been discussing or, or potentially discussing in our office is that this section of east east main is that what you guys call it i'm sorry north elm um, north elm it's close is actually in brockton and if this were extended up a little bit further to, to channelize and make sure that, that people weren't cutting across, would it be possible to go to the traffic commission and have a new stop put here? And this is basically to the, to the uh, traffic planner. Because right now you have- Yeah, there's no reason have, we couldn't- yeah, Director May, there's no reason we couldn't do that. And in fact, I think to the counselor's point, I think that, you know, looking at this and, and that would be a way to slow the traffic down to some extent. And then working with the city to address speeds going in the other direction as well. You know, I, I think there's some opportunities to deal with both of those things. And I think to try to get to, I think, what the, you know, the primary issue, which is speeding. It's volume of traffic, but it's it's really speeding of traffic. And so some of these things, I think we could work with the city to try to control the speeds. And what you've suggested would be, you know, one of the ways to do that, have people stop, slow down, look at what's going on before they proceed uh, into the city. Because you have this conflict here that is just, and I hope people can see the blue arrows. Yes, we can. Um, that just it is Michigas. It's a mess. Um, and then with the other road over here, if if this island were extended and there no be another stop line there, uh, it certainly would. I would think would improve uh, safety in this area. Right. And so, if, if the board if they work with the city. Is this something that um, the planning board would could put it as a condition to have this? Who do they meet with next? They would meet with the traffic commission. Traffic commission. Okay. And we have some raised hands, so I'm going to stop sharing. Is this a and... comment? Uh, Gordon, who does 
is this is Gordon's first chance to discuss, um, and then I'll get back to Jack H. So Gordon, you should be promoting shortly. Hang on. As a panelist. And when it pops up on your screen, Gordon, you need to accept the promotion. There we and go. We're, oh, we, Gordon we, declined. We, I'm sorry. Okay. Right. So Gordon, I'm going to uh, otherwise unmute your microphone now. You should be able to address the board. Right. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, my name is Gordon Jazad. I live at 108. Gordon. Yes, Samuel Avenue. And uh, it seems to me that we're going to extreme lengths to accommodate one house in the new development with that exit. You know, we're talking about extending the island, putting in stop signs, right turn only, which we know they won't uh, abide by. They'll be taking lefts and everything else. But uh, it seems to me we're going to an awful length to satisfy a few houses in this new development, which I don't have any objection to, but uh, why not just eliminate that exit altogether and have that one or two customers take that few hundred feet down and go out the other exit? Well, it's also for um, emergency vehicles access it's not yeah. just one house so we we need another egress so gordon our... you need another one another entrance bar for uh, emergency vehicle yeah in case our... the other other entrance is blocked there has to be a second way our longest sub or uh dead end street or cul-de-sac can only be 600 feet so uh it's required um, to have another uh, entrance uh, for emergency vehicles. And God, how many uh, developments do we have in Brockton uh, elsewhere with only one e entrance or exit? I think plenty. I'm not sure, but if we're trying to do things right moving forward. Yeah, I understand that, but it uh, seems we're going through an awful uh, a lot of effort to satisfy, well, if it's required by the city, that's one thing, but um, to do it- So for besides, the this, besides this right exit, because we've kind of beat this to, to death, is there any other concerns with this project? Gordon? Uh, no, I just wondering, well, when you expect to start the project? And what would be the uh, length of time to complete it? Um, Rob, you want to Scott? speak to the process? Because he they still have to come back. And yeah, realistically, the <clears throat> excuse me, the approval process, we've got to go to Conservation Commission first before we file with you folks. The conservation process is about three months. Then we need to file for technical review. That's about two months. Then we need to come before you guys. That's a couple months. Realistically, it's this isn't going to get approved until next winter. I would assume construction starts in April, and it's realistically probably three years. It, it's probably a three-year-long project. So it's, it's probably four years from now. You would hopefully, assuming the economy is good and everybody keeps rolling, four years from now, you would be buttoning up the project, I would hope, Madam Chair. Right. Thank you, Scott. Any other public uh, comments? I have one more hand up from Anthony. And I'm promoting Anthony to um, panelist. And Mr. Valenti, and uh, we've heard enough on the right turn. So if, please don't be redundant. There's just one question on that. If, they, if it's a right turn only, what's going to stop them from taking the right turn and going around that little island? You know, take a right turn out of the, the entrance and then take your first quick left to going around the island to go back on Copeland Street. Do you understand? You're talking yeah. about extend you're talking about the island extending it out, but what's gonna stop them from going around it, the backside of it, take a right out of the parking lot and take a quick left. And that's gonna cause it 
a backup over there too. People are cutting across the street right there. Do you, do you know what I'm trying to say? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, I do. Good question. Okay. If you're looking to do that, you would use the the northern end exit of our site instead of making radical moves and and things like that. You would just use the the other end the other exit. Yeah, but people are going to pull out, take a right only, and then stop right there to take a left, and that's going to that would be even probably even worse. But that but left you, is, a, is one way only. You, you'd be taking a left onto that that cut through where it's not allowed. So I I mean I don't know what stops anybody from going down the wrong way on a one way road. Could um, mm -hmm. that be also worked in with the traffic committee for a sign no no left turn at that stop sign? That section of the road is actually in uh, West Bridgewater. Yeah. Okay. So the applicant would have Although to- Although it's, it's not aligned. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen again. It's not aligned very well because of this coping. It looks like it's a two-way too. To be making a, a U-turn here. That's a two-way, isn't it, though? It is. Yeah, so it's just the- Yes, but if you notice that it, it's got this curvature to it, it's Yeah, but still, they're going to take the right, and they're going to take that left. You know they're going to do that. But they're going to be stopping, blocking traffic, or well, cutting across the traffic. Will come up the northern end of the road, wouldn't they? Yeah, I, if I could just add, Madam Chair, I mean, it, it's not to say to the to the commenter's point, I mean, it's not to say no one will do it. It doesn't make any sense to do it because it yeah, doesn't, well, it, it's it's awkward. And it, yeah. if you live in the project and you want to go in that direction, you would never do that because it's an awkward maneuver, as Director May had shown. You're going to come well, out the main entrance and just go straight because that, that's the easiest move to, to make. You would not come out and, and it's really convoluted. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. yeah. If if you don't want them to do it, they're going to do it. You could try to make it so it can't be done. Well, okay. I think and it'd be more headache for them if they tried that. So I, I, I you know, well, I can never say never, but it it would just be more headache for that driver. And I, I'm going to allow Jack H to talk again. Pardon me. <clears throat> So am I unmuted? Or? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, yes, you are. Uh, Rob May, can you put the picture up again of the drawing? Uh, there's a couple uh, of things on there I'd like to show of the street, the, the graphic you had had up there. Yes, hang on just a second, please. Oops. So the thing I wanted to show is if you zoom in on the triangle area, is there's, there's a town line marker that's there that you can see in the picture. A little bit further up, you see that white block right there that's in the, in the, in the that you, your cursor's right on it. That is the town line marker. And the town line runs diagonally, kind of the same direction as the, the black line you see in the pavement on Copeland Street. That's the town line going through there. So what I wanted to say is putting the stop sign 25 feet on North Elm Street, where it goes into Copeland Street, stopping 25 feet into Brockton is not a good idea. And the reason why I say that is the sight lines. It's downhill going from coming north from West Bridgewater, and you wouldn't be able to see it, and it's around the curve. So I would recommend you stay with what the traffic engineer has already proposed. Adding all these other conditions onto it doesn't make any sense and it makes it unsafe. This traffic engineer has put together a proposal that I think is the best outcome for that intersection. And, and that's what I, I would not recommend putting that stop sign there. Thank you, sir. Hmm. Okay. I, I would think that the the stop line would be farther up into Brockton in this area here. Um, it is granted a short 
distance into Brockton, but um, it gets you a little bit farther up. And that's with the island being extended. Yes, yes, ma'am. Right. I'm, of course, I'm not a traffic engineer. Um, and I would want uh, Vanessa to look at that as Adam's part here. of their definitive Larry. application. Yes, Larry. Being seen, you know, we're, we're, we're beating this one, but as we just finished hearing from what Mr. Hughes had to say, if the traffic commission were to work on this and extend that triangle peninsula and put a stop sign in the Brockton area, we've seen a lot of these um, ex extra signs or whatever you want to call them further before the stop sign. Is that there's a stop signal coming as well to maybe eliminate what Mr. Hughes is thinking about because I think having a stop sign there would be kind of an important issue because I travel that road a lot and going left, going right, um, it is a little crazy over there sometimes. So it's just a thought. So um, Rob mentioned having Vanessa look at that, look into that further. Okay. And so if this does get approved, that should be a condition. Okay. Any other public comment or can we close that? I have one other attendee. Oh, I'm sorry. That was Jack H. So we've already taken that. Okay. And I don't have anybody else with their hand raised, Madam Chair. All right. And well, again, for the record, this is a preliminary. This is not the final. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's going to be more work done on it. Right. Can I thank um, the public for their input, sharing, you know, their opinions, suggestions. Is there a motion? Well, um, oh, go Madam Chair, we, go, go ahead, Larry. Well, um, this one, there's been a lot of discussion on it. So I, I think one of the bigger issues is the, how we're gonna determine how to approve this to move forward with um, a meeting with traffic commission and also discussion on that Southern exit, whether that's gonna really be an exit or for emergency purposes only, so. Yes, yeah, so it would, be, it would be the condition that it's written into the plan. It's a right turn exit only, not an entrance. Um, a condition to meet with the traffic traffic commission regarding the stop sign and also before that, um, extending the triangular island as described by Mr. May. Yes, Mr. Both. Dirk. To do. Madam Chair, the, I'm sure the Traffic Commission might send that out for a study as well. I could be mistaken, but do we want to make the island, um, you know, condition or contingent upon what the outcome from the Traffic Commission is going to be? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Is there a motion? We need a, a motion to approve uh, conditioned with the traffic commission review uh, and specifically with that road, roadway island extension with proper signage. Um, I think that covered it. I'll second. The right out. And the right out, no entrance. To the right, one. exactly. All right. Did I hear a second? I'll second that, yes. Okay, roll call, Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Marty Crowell? Marty, you're on mute. Yes, yes. All right, thank you. Tony Gonzalez, yes. All right, thank you, everyone. Thanks for your time, folks. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. All right, as any further business we need to discuss, Mr. May? or we get a motion to adjourn.
I think we should just remind anybody who that um, 1315 Main Street was continued. Anyone in case they came late, Teen Challenge was continued until next or uh, the next planning board meeting, which is going to be August 1st. Thank you, Evan. Motion to adjourn. Is there anything we need to come in and sign for before we go? The street acceptances. And they'll be ready this week, next week. I've... I'll have Isaiah reach out to you. Okay. All Thank right. You. Just let us know. Thank you. All right. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Roll call. Larry Assam? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Marty Crowell? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. See you in August. Good night. Good night. Good night.